Yep. Hey, it's Jordan with TYT, TYT Politics, live from the presidential debate here at Washington University in St. Louis. And I have Mark McKinnon right next to me uh, of the circus fame on Showtime. You uh, also have been an advisor to uh, uh, President Bush and others. Uh, I'll start with your party. Obviously, that's been the big story uh, over the last few days. I think with Donald Trump, uh, the question is, electorally, is there, is there any real chance for him uh, short of a, a nuclear bomb that WikiLeaks drops on Hillary Clinton, is there, is there a chance for him to climb back into this? Well, you know the drinking game, never have I ever. Well, never have I ever seen an election like this, and we've been wrong so many times. So conventionally, you'd say uh, it was, he had a difficult path after the first debate because Clinton won it pretty convincingly, according to almost all conventional sources. So she's built sort of a durable three to five point lead, and uh, so that would mean that something spectacular would have to happen tonight in order for him to just get competitive again. But what's happened in the last week or two is that all those swing states have opened up and made it much more difficult for him. And uh, with him, it seems like you know the media loves to cover the, uh, <laughs> the chaos inside the Republican Party. But it looks, obviously, I think last time I checked, like 16 uh, Republicans have, have fleed. But Paul Ryan hasn't formally. Uh, Mike Pence, obviously, there's some palace intrigue, what he's going to do. For, for the future of the Republican Party, do you think that, you know, Pence, Ryan, uh, you know, the, the, the grown-ups, shall we say, uh, need to uh, part ways? Well, I think one of the interesting things about what's happening right now is that you know, if Trump doesn't win, and maybe it even does, is that one outcome of all this is I think it's going to split the Republican Party into two really different parties. I mean, you're going to have the elite establishment, and you're going to have the sort of the, the Trump followers, and uh, it's going to take a while for that rift to be healed. And so we may really have kind of two separate parties for a while. And meanwhile, it hasn't gotten as much coverage, but I mean, <laughs> Everything that Bernie Sanders said about Hillary Clinton, a lot of progressives have been saying about Hillary yeah. Clinton. It's all in writing, and it's 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 barely a it's well, barely a mark on on the radar in the media. Hillary Clinton may be the luckiest candidate for president ever. I mean, first of all, getting Trump, because arguably almost any one of the other primary candidates could have could have beat Hillary Clinton. And then two, uh, to, to have all of this happen at a time when a bunch of bad news for her came. I mean, those, the speeches that came out, there's a lot of bad stuff in there. And we'll probably hear a good bit of it tonight, but obviously it's been obscured, at least in the last couple of news cycles, by the news about Donald Trump. Let me just ask you as a political matter, because something that's really bothered me. The Democrats, I mean, anytime you challenge Donna Brazil, uh, any of Hillary Clinton's pe people, it's like this Cold War hysteria. Just deflect onto the Russians, deflect onto the Russians. You've been in the, the, spin, the spin business for a little bit. Uh, is, is that going to work? Because it seems to me, number one, there's no hard evidence that it's Russia. But number two, I mean, what you said it yourself, what's in there, you can't just deflect. Well, I think what that reflects is that they don't have a good answer. And you don't have a good answer blame somebody else and, and try to deflect. You know, so that's what they're doing, but, uh, but you know, they've got a lot of bad facts. And so when you have bad facts, change, change this up. For, um, for the millennials uh, that she's been having a hard time getting in her corner, and for the Rust Belt, which is very important, you know, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Michigan, uh, do you think if Trump uses it, uh, you know, kind of cleverly tonight and gets his shots in, do you think... Uh, the weight that is carried in those uh, transcripts and the things she said could outweigh the terrible things he said for those voting blocks? Um, well, that's that's where he has an opportunity. I mean, there, she's got a real vulnerability there, and and he's on firm ground when he's talking about trade and jobs and, and, and frankly, a, a millennial appeal that, that Hillary Clinton has failed to tap. So, that's where he did well in the last day, in the first 30 minutes. And he just has to make that a full 90 minutes, but he's obviously got one big hurdle to get over before he does that. And uh, last question. I don't know, maybe I'm a conspiracy theorist, but all this seemed a little too coordinated to me. You know, like on Friday, you see uh, WikiLeaks, uh, excuse me, the uh, WikiLeaks comes out with something, and all of a sudden you see this Washington Post story, and now there's other things coming out. It, it seems to me like a lot of these people either were sitting on it, or Hillary Clinton's campaign was sitting on it and released it when WikiLeaks dropped. I don't know. I don't really buy it. I mean, I, I think there's a pretty legitimate story about, you know, how the sort of entertainment 
network thought about the Machado story and then we sort of flashed back to that time period and said, oh, that's when we had Trump on for the show and we should probably go back and listen to those tapes. That makes sense to me. That was kind of a, no, the question about how it actually got out from NBC to the Washington Post. I think that probably has more to do with somebody in the news division leaking it than something political. I mean, I think that they were just probably unhappy that the story wasn't getting out. Mm-hmm. But I don't see this as something that, you know, I don't think that, I don't think the Democratic ops people could have gotten that because that's the property of a, of a, of a network target. And uh, where could people find uh, the latest with Showtime and the circus? Uh, we will be back. We're, at, we're down tonight, but we'll be back up next Sunday for the rest of the election. And uh, it's ironic because I remember we thought about the name of the